Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to create a painting of two belted Galloway cards against a dramatic sky, somewhat inspired by Dartmoor in Devon. So I'm beginning with my A2 mixed media paper and I've used a watercolour marker pen to just put in some loose outlines of the two calves and my plan is to use this frayed decorator's brush to create my landscape and then I may use the same brush on some of the cattle but we'll see how that goes. So I'm beginning with um, a pre-used palette as you can see and I've got my uh, titanium white, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue and the plan is to have a fairly low horizon line so I'm going to take some of the white. This is conventional acrylic. If I can't remember if I just said that or not, but uh, this is conventional acrylic. I'm probably going to switch to interactive acrylics later on. So I've just picked up a little bit of the Silurian and uh, yeah, mostly the white. And I'm going to begin by just putting a band of that in here. And notice I'm kind of wiggling the brush as I move from one side of the paper to the other. So the idea is to just create some textures in the sky, really. A little bit more of the Silurian, mostly on one side of the brush. And I'm keeping the sky fairly pale uh, at the on this lower part of the painting because I want the cattle to be fairly dark and st stand out against the sky. So let's go back in with a bit more white. Just alternate things a little so that it's not just going from light to dark as we go up. Now you can see I'm going over the, the drawing I've done uh, to some extent. And that's quite intentional because once the paint is dried, I should be able to see enough of the initial lines that I've put down. Um, you know, enough to follow them and use them as a guide. So uh, let's grab a bit more of the Silurian blue and I'm going to grab a little edge of white on the end of my brush there. So, so the paint's going down a little bit thicker where that edge of white is. And now, as I work my way up the paper, we'll add a little more of the Silurian, but we'll still keep a little bit of white on that edge. I'm going to put the same again down again, but a little more of the Silurian. I'm going to just pick up a little edge of the Ultra Marine Blue this time. Get a little more of that. And it's come out a little strong there in the center, so we'll just we'll tease that little patch of dark blue out into other parts of the painting. Back to the Silurian. So getting closer to pure cerulean now. Again, I'm keeping that kind of wiggle of the brush going. A little more of the ultramarine mixed in with the cerulean. Now, the boundary between some of these uh, bands is perhaps a little harsh, so I'm just going to feather the tips of the bristles diagonally from right down to left over those kind of transition bands. So that's going to soften the transition, but also 
perhaps create a slight suggestion of rain. And, and I really like the effect I'm getting there, so I'm going to do the same on that dark patch of blue. I'll come over here for this bit on the right as well. So back in with more of the ultramarine this time. Mix that in with what's left of the cerulean. Let's go back to the wiggle for the moment. Darker again, more of the ultramarine. Pretty much pure ultramarine that I'm putting down now. And again, using just the tips of the bristles of the brush. I'm going to go the other way this time. We'll go top left, diagonally down to bottom right. Just softening some of the transitions that we have. Well, now that I've got the sky in place, I'm going to come back and add some clouds in a moment. But I've got this blue on my brush. And uh, if I add a bit of white to that, then I may as well use that same brush to put a little bit of color on the white stripe of the belties. And well, and that bit's gone a bit wayward, uh, so we'll have to cover that up a bit later. And then because I've got this frayed brush, I can kind of make use of that and push against the bristles so that I get a frayed edge. And I'm um, a frayed edge to the to the white stripe, but also by kind of putting the paint on fairly thickly, get a little bit of texture in the patch of paint that I put down. So it's kind of a nice, efficient way to do things. Now, let's have a look. We can do with a bit of blue there as well. And then, of course, we want to introduce some sense of light falling on the animals. So the whole band isn't going to be, the whole band of white isn't going to be the same color or indeed the same tone. So a bit more white on the brush. And we can begin to suggest that we've got light falling down, cascading down onto the onto the bodies of these calves. Now I won't know what it, how well it, that's working exactly until uh, until the paint completely dries. But you know we're we're going in the right direction. Now, I want to put some clouds in the sky, as I mentioned. So which bits of the sky do I like the most? Well, I like the lower part because when, I think when I darken the cattle later, that's going to make them stand out. So that's cool. I quite like this still. I'm a little less happy up here. So I think what we'll do is begin by we'll carry on with that same stuff I've got on the brush. But this time 
I'll add a few swirly marks to begin to create some clouds and I quite like the idea of getting some of the texture that I've got in the cattle already into the sky. So as you can see I'm rolling the brush and twisting it to see what kind of effects I can get. So I quite like that so far. Let's grab a little bit more paint. And keep varying the way I'm applying the brush to the surface of the painting. I want to get a little bit more white in the clouds on the right, I think. So I've just picked up a little corner of white, pure white there. And I quite like the idea of having a sort of uh, a bulkier mass of cloud at the top and then a few wispier bits as we come down towards the horizon. So I still want to keep this pale colour predominantly in place, but I think just a few little wisps of this darker colour uh, will work quite well. And I've just very gently introduced you know, diagonals there as well. So that's sort of leading the eye into the main focus of the painting. You know, it's not sort of laboured, it's not like straight, straight lines, but I think that helps lead the eye to the focus of the painting. Well, the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of contrast to the pale sky down at the bottom here. So I've cleaned my brush, but not, not all that thoroughly, I mean pretty well. There's a little bit of blue and white on there and I've just added some burnt umber to my palette and that's what I've got on the brush for the most part. So I'm just going to break up this line here. Uh, so just the very tips of the brush here. Just to add a little bit of contrast as mentioned to the pale sky. And what's quite nice is because I put down the paint quite thickly on the sky and I use that wobble, there are little ridges in the surface of the paint and as I flick the burnt umber across the surface very lightly, that's picking up those ridges and leaving them pale and I really quite like that effect. So that wasn't my plan when I started the painting, but uh, I'm happy to exploit that now that I've discovered it. So I'm just varying the angle of my brush strokes a little bit as well and also the height to which I take the brush stroke so that you know it's not too uniform. And then I'll also just tap in with the ends of the bristles a couple of longer bits too. Now while we have that colour on the brush, um, we'll add that where we can. Now I've got to be a little bit careful here because there's a fine line in my opinion between using a brush which is big and expressive and then one which is so big that you can't really do a decent job. And for the size of the cattle and the size of this brush, 
it's pretty could get a little um you know a little close little close to the boundary of being a bit too clumsy in terms of brush size but we'll see how we go i'm going to try and put in some shadows the big the biggest bulk shapes of shadow on these cattle so obviously we've got a dark ear on the right here so i'm just using the corner of the brush and then this eye is in shadow So just squinting at the, the reference in between brush strokes. There's a patch of shadow on the forehead there. And the left side of the head is predominantly in shadow. As is the other ear. And then the front of the nose is in shadow as well. So that started to create a sense of 3D. Started to bring this little animal to life. And then the head is casting a shadow down the side of the body. And the chest is in shadow as well. And if you know little bits of white show through here, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. It doesn't have to be a complete block of tone at this stage. We'll sweep the brush round in a curved fashion to create a little bit of um, a sense of contour as we curve around the body of the animal. The legs are pretty much immersed in shadow as well. Again, I'm getting fr fr uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and again I'm getting frayed edges on the edge of my silhouette, but that's what I want for this stuff, you know, because these are these are fluffy, furry animals, so, or hairy, I guess, rather than furry. Bit of shadow there, just in front of the hind leg. And then, now I picked up a bit of white, but that's kind of worked out okay there. So, but I, that said, I am re just refreshing my brush with uh, burnt umber. So again, working against the bristles at times to keep the textures going. So we, you know, very textural painting so far today. Got like nice textures in the sky. Got some textures on that horizon line, and uh, similarly on the on the animal. Now we've got one black and white Galloway and we've got one red and white. But for now, we're just thinking tonally. So I can continue with my burnt umber. And when I add some uh, color later, we can distinguish between the two different types of animal that we've got here. Now, the, uh, the head of the animal in the background is obviously a little smaller than this one, so we'll try and go fairly carefully with the corner of the brush. So that's working out okay from my point of view so far. Now, 
uh, I'm not the the animals in the in the photo appear to be in long grass. Um, that's not exactly the environment I'm going to put them in. I mean, there will be grass and stuff, but I'm just going to much in the same way I did the sky. I'm going to kind of do my own thing. But what we can take from the photo is some of the shadow that's being cast by the animals. Um, onto the plant life below. But in terms of my burnt umber, um, I'm pretty much done there. I think I will add perhaps a few dark shadow areas down here. And then I'm going to let that dry. Um, not too worried about the animals drying, but this stuff in the foreground needs to dry. Then I'll come back and add some uh, foliage colours in just a bit. Well, now that that paint is dried, I'm coming in with a little bit of uh, lemon yellow and a touch of titanium white. And we'll do something similar to the way we treated the sky. So I'm going to use that sort of zigzag pattern in part to coat the lower half of the painting. Now you can see I've got rather more yellow on my brush compared to the the white and yellow mix that I had on the right hand side. And I find that's often a, you know, a good thing to do is to just vary the colour you've got if you're trying to describe you know, plant life or something in, in the natural world. There's generally going to be a bit of variation. Now yeah, this painting is clearly not going to be photorealistic. But nevertheless, we can still mimic nature in part when we sort of create our, our own world within the painting. So I quite like the, uh, the strength of the yellow there, but I'm just grabbing, I may as well show you, I'm just grabbing a bit of the blue that we had left over from before. I'm going to mix that in with the yellow. So we've got a green, but it's, it's not a thoroughly mixed green. So it's kind of more yellowy on this side and more bluey on the other side. Just had a stray fibre on the brush there. So. Let's uh, use a similar technique to the one we used in the sky. Now, one of the things that hasn't worked as well as I would like is I was hoping some of these darker shadows that I put down earlier, that I waited, you know, I waited for them to dry, I kind of thought they would show through a little better than they are, but um, we can live without that and add some darker patches in later if needed. So then we'll grab some of the ultramarine, mix that in with the green that we have so far, grab a little bit of the pure yellow, and I'm going to grab just a corner of the white onto, onto my brush. So I've basically got uh, the darker green, the lighter green, and then just a corner of white. And so we'll see what happens when this goes on.
And now I want to tackle the animals next and start to bring them to life. So I've switched to a half inch flat brush. This one's a little bit frayed as well. So I'm hoping that uh, I can you know, get some nice edges going. Um, got my burnt umber. Let's grab some of the ultramarine blue and a little bit more of that. And then we'll see if we can um, begin to bring this one in the background to life. So I'm going to begin by painting over almost everything that I've done in terms of the pure burnt umber. So the idea there is I hope that when this fairly thin coat that I'm putting down now uh, dries, some of the underlying shadow work that I've put down already will still show through. And as I do this, I can kind of refine the line of the back of the foreground animal. I've refined it, a, refined it a little too much there, though. Um, and as I go in towards the the white stripe, with a flick of the brush, I can add to the frayed nature of the edge of that white stripe. Okay, now you can see I've got a little bit of the watercolor marker from my initial drawing still showing. That's an effect that I don't mind personally. Um, I quite like some of the initial work of the painting to show through in the finished product. And by applying the paint fairly thinly, you know, because I've got a little bit of translucency, you know, some of the oranginess of the of the burnt umber is going to show through. Some of the areas of unpainted, previously unpainted paper, that's going to show through a little bit. So it's almost like painting with watercolor when you use acrylic in a thin way, or, or at least there are some similarities. So you see, again, I've got the original drawing showing through there. Again, I'm fairly happy to, to have that as is. So the next thing I'm going to do then, I may as well carry on working on, on this uh, chap in the background, uh, is I'm going to grab some of the ultramarine blue. I, di I didn't wash my brush out, so there is a little bit of the burnt umber in there as well still. And we'll grab a touch of white. And we can use this as the beginnings of a highlight color. Now, when you're painting black fur um, or hair, you want to keep your highlights very subdued. Much better to keep them too dark, as I have here by accident, I, I have to confess. I didn't, didn't intend my highlight to be quite that dark. But you can always make it a bit lighter. If it goes too light, then uh, that does not... Um, depict the reality of the lighting on a on black hair or black fur so but that said let's go a little bit lighter i think that's a little bit better now let's see how that looks on the nose that's more like it now i'm still being fairly crude with my brushwork. Now what I mean by that is I am, I am taking care. 
I'm doing the best I can with this brush to mimic um, the areas of highlight and so on that, that I'm seeing. And as it happened, the brush has frayed quite nicely. And I, I quite like these multiple brush strokes that I'm getting at the moment. But I'm not overly concerned about getting it, it, it exactly right. And that kind of, kind of keeps the work fresh and spontaneous. And also, if I do end up with areas that I'm not too happy with, I'm going to be coming back in with my interactive acrylics in a bit. So, you know, I can correct anything I need to. All right, so time to work on the other animal. So let's grab some of the lemon yellow. I've cleaned my brush out. I'm going to grab a touch of cadmium red that I just added to my palette. Grab a bit more. Now, that's not mixing up a very, uh, sorry, I was off camera there. That's not mixing up a very deep um, orange. And the reason is, I think, the, the, the pot of paint I've been using, I haven't used for a while, so I think all the pigment has settled at the bottom. So I'm just going to go and give that a good stir. I shall, I shall return. Right, we'll try that again. Here's the red, looking a lot healthier than it was. And we'll mix that in with the lemon yellow as previously planned. A little more red. Keep going. Backing up with the yellow again. And I'm gonna add just a touch of burnt umber in there just so that it's not too vibrant. Again, not that it matters too much because I can always adjust the color, but now we can come onto this foreground animal Let's uh, do a similar trick. We're going to paint over the vast, or the vast majority of the uh, burnt umber that I put down before. So just adjusting the shape of the top of the head there. Now, I'm not simply colouring in my drawing as I do this. I am referring constantly to the reference photo because uh, yeah, the initial drawing I did was very loose and quite minimal, really, in terms of the level of description that I included. Um, but again, I'm using the, the, the frayed end of the brush to introduce a little bit of a frayed edge to... the regions of orange I'm putting down. Now, this part of the burnt umber, I'm, I'm going to leave, I think, uncoated. I think that works fairly well. So we'll move over to the, the rear end of the animal. Oh, I forgot to say that while the paint was drying, when I came back to the painting, I realized that um, because in the reference, these both of these animals are in a field and you're kind of looking down on the field, the way I've put my drawing or created my drawing is, and 
relative to the horizon line. It looks as if this little guy is standing up on a little hillock or something that's been obscured by by the one in front. And I spotted that quite a while ago, um, and I just forgot to mention it, you know, on, on the soundtrack here. So, uh, but I decided to keep it as it is. I quite like, I just quite like the effect. It makes it just a little bit unusual, I think, in terms of composition. But it is sort of believable, you know, up on Dartmoor, for example, if this was on Dartmoor, you know, it, you know, there could well be a rock there or just a little mound of earth or something. Um, so definitely a plausible explanation for the, for the composition. But I kind of like the fact that uh, it's, come out, it's come out that way. So again, I'm keeping some of this burnt umber showing through, but I'm just taking care to cover the little patches of white paper that were still showing here and there. And then having applied that orange, I can grab a little bit of the titanium white and we'll just lighten the orange a bit and begin to add some highlights. Again, not over Again, not over sort of thinking it, just trying to stay as large as possible in terms of mark making within reason. So yet again, using the little frayed ends of the brush to flick little bits of paint so that we end up with a frayed edge to the silhouette of this animal. Now, while that paint is drying, I'm going to come back in and grab some of the burnt umber blue mix that I used for this animal here. And I'm going to mix that in with the, the darker green, which uh, uh, pretty much run out actually, so I'll have to remix that. Let's grab some of the ultramarine blue, some of that burnt umber. Uh, that looks to be like a fairly decent shadow colour. It's not quite as dark as I was intending, but uh, nevertheless, we will see how it works. So my idea here is to just um, begin to describe some of the shadow being cast by these animals, because if you remember, it kind of got obliterated really uh, when I did the foreground work earlier. So I think that's working reasonably well. So just to keep the kind of weird world that uh, I'm creating here a little consistent, or self-consistent, I should say, um, I'll just put a few touches of that darker colour dotted around. Now we're getting fairly close to completing the conventional acrylic stage of the painting uh, because as mentioned once this is dry I'm going to come in with my interactive acrylics and just add some finishing touches and, and other effects. Um, but at the moment I'm 
on the whole, I'm pretty happy, but I've got this bright orange cow here, you know, which again, that's cool. But I kind of feel I just want to put a little touch of orange in the sky. I did this the other week with, um, uh, I think, a sheet painting, um, and I think it worked fairly well. So I'm going to come back in with my lemon yellow. And uh, I've got some of that orange there, so we'll grab some of that, but we'll grab a little bit more of the red as well. Because if the if the orange in the sky is a little more to the red, then I don't I don't mind. Um, and let's see what this looks like. I, you know, I'm not going to go crazy here, but I just want to put perhaps a couple of little touches. Um, you know, perhaps on the edge of a little cloud there. I think that's probably enough. I'm not going to do any more in terms of orange uh, in the sky. So uh, yeah, time to let this dry completely, let the cattle dry completely and come back with the interactives. Um, well, actually I spoke too soon. So I'm just gonna add, uh, this is pure white conventional acrylic as I've been using throughout so far. Just want to add a couple of little touches of white there and then I'm dipping my brush into the lemon yellow and then into the the red I haven't cleaned the brush I'm just dipping the ends of the bristles into the red So it's not very much, but I just feel a little bit of a breakup of the of the greens and the yellows in the foreground was required there. So now that the conventional acrylic is completely dry, I've switched to interactive acrylic. So I've got cadmium yellow light, cerulean blue, ultra marine blue, orange. So that's just what the tube says. It simply says orange. Uh, cadmium red, tinting white, and titanium white. Got a little filbert brush here, uh, which is a flat spade-shaped brush. So my first move is going to be to tackle the head of uh, the foreground animal. And I'm going to begin with a bit of tinting white. Uh, and a bit of orange and I think that might make quite a nice highlight color so let's see how that works by adding some to the edge of the ear top of the head And the great advantage of working in the way that I have is that conventional acrylic dries very quickly. And once it is dry, it's completely waterproof. So in contrast to that, the interactive acrylics take, I don't know the exact time, but it you know, takes a day or two to completely dry, certainly several hours, but it becomes touch dry quite quickly. And consequently, that makes it easy to work with but also if i mess up hopefully i'm not going to but if i mess up this uh, interactive acrylic layer i can just spray the surface of the painting with water wipe off the error and my conventional acrylic painting will be completely preserved underneath you know so i can just reset and, and try again but as I say, I'm going to do my best to avoid that eventuality. Just 
just mixing up a little bit more paint here. Same thing again. It's come out a little bit thicker, so I'm just and I quite like the color. So I'm just going to add a little bit more to the forehead there, as I just did. And then still trying to not get tangled up in too much detail, but just capture an approximation of the way the hair is falling on the animal's head. Now the highlight on the, the sort of bridge of the nose here does change colour somewhat um, compared to what I've got. But for now, just want to get the highlights in place. So although I'm adding detail and smaller marks, the aim is to stay as free with the mark making as I did right at the very beginning of the painting. And when I put these little marks along the outline of the back here, taking care to just change their position, the angle of the brush, the angle of the mark I make, so that, so that they're not too regular. And as I do it here, if you remember earlier, I kind of swept the brush up with the flat little flat brush and got those nice little marks. Now, I quite really, well, I really like them, them actually, but they're not very clear because they're quite translucent. So what I'm trying to do is essentially just colour in those random marks with this more opaque colour. I don't have to get every single one. I don't have to get it perfect. But the randomness that was created by the frayed brush, I can use to my advantage by, you know, just following what I've already done. I'm going to come back to that little patch that I I put on the uh, on the shoulder there a moment ago, but we'll, we'll return to that in a bit. And then I'm going to add a bit more of the tinting white to that same mixture. And then really squinting at the reference, just pick out some of the bright spots. within the larger highlights that I've put down. And then I'm just dragging off most of the paint off the brush. And I'm just grabbing some pure tinting white and mixing that in with just the, the, the tiny bit of uh, the highlight colour that I had left on the brush. And then within those brighter areas that I just put down, I'm just going to pick out a couple of super bright little areas. Again, squinting at the reference really helps to identify these. And obviously I've got more to do on the nose and the face, but for now, in terms of the 
oranges or the orangey highlights that'll do but what I do want to do is just uh, grab my little flat frayed brush that I used previously and I'm just going to do this well what I'm going to do I'm going to do it off camera but I'm just going to spray the clean brush with water and uh, I'm just going to drag this brush through through those highlights just to soften them a little bit and kind of tease the paint out across the the shadows that are there and then while I've got that on the brush we'll use that I mean there's hardly any paint there really but just drag a little bit of texture textural highlights really into those shadow regions could do a little bit there on the, the chest and when that dries back I think it will be barely visible but it does add a little extra layer uh, I feel to the uh, to the illusion now um, same brush I'm going to dip into my actually that was the titanium white which I'm going to go back to the tinting white first of all and we'll just add a little bit more white to this central stripe although I do like the blue uh, against the orange so we don't want to kill that completely and then I'm just grabbing pure tinting uh, no, pure titanium white I should say and we'll put some of that on the top of the back where the light is strongest all right well we've tackled the highlights so what I'm going to do now is I've just added some burnt umber to my palette and uh, having you know worked that around with the brush a little bit I'm just going to spray that paint with a bit of water and again work the brush through so that I get a fairly thin or very thin mix of that and then again squinting at my reference what I'm going to do is use this to begin to darken some of the shadows so by going back to the slightly larger brush it, keep, it forces me to stay fairly loose and think in simple terms now the main reason I wanted to do this you know apart from darkening the shadows in general where needed is this bit here this orange which is showing through from earlier that that needs to be darker so the approach I'm going to take is to darken the whole of that left hand side of the head and then when that dries back um, my hope is that you know there will still be a lighter patch within the dark shadow but uh, we can, can oops oh that went a bit wayward but it kind of worked out okay um, so we can kind of take that approach and add a bit more texture to the shadow and cut into the white stripe a little bit working against the bristles of the brush now this area down here needs to be darker than I had it to sort of complete the, the belly of the beast um, we'll come in here And add a few little hints of fluffiness with that same color And maybe just a touch touch there and perhaps there as well a little bit on the eye and for that little passage of uh, 
burnt umber. I think that will do. But while I've got it on the brush, I'm just looking to see whether I can do something similar. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that same mix, but the paint is still very, very thin. So while we've got dark colours on the brush, let's go back to the other animal and add in some super deep shadows within the, the dark areas that I've already got. Again, making use of the frayed bristles uh, where I can. So notice I'm not simply just colouring in the whole of this cow in the background, this little uh, calf, big calf I should say, um, because within the dark there are dark of darks and lighter darks. Now, while I've got that super dark colour on my brush, I'm just switching to this little round brush with a nice tip, a uh, nice pointed tip. And uh, I'm just going to go with that same colour. So it's a mix of the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. But what we're going to do is make, I've, I've mixed up the paint a little bit thicker than it was. And what I'm going to do now is just try to pop in uh, an eye on the right here. That very dark colour. And then one on the left. Just trying to get the position correct. So for now I'm just putting in a dark shape. And then we'll use that same colour for a nostril. On the on the right, now I'm, I'm not doing it today, but a good tip I find is that if you're struggling to to get the brush to behave in the way you want and, and create the shape you want for these tiny little details. Once the acrylic's dry, you can go back in with a pencil and just draw the shape you want. So you've got a, or even a watercolour marker, depending on the size of the shape. And uh, you can kind of draw out the shape you want and then you can fill that in with the brush uh, and the pencil line will disappear. So it's quite a neat way of um, getting around the brush, which can be limiting sometimes in terms of um, you know, how precise a mark you can make. Now, the lower lip of the, of the little calf needs to be darker there, so I'm using the same colour to just darken that. But popping the eyes in, I think I've made the head of this one a little bit too narrow, actually, compared to the, the reference. But, you know, it's OK in terms of the, the painting. I think it's, it's close enough for, for my purposes. Um, so let's go back to the other animal and... Or just perhaps uh, hinted a bit more of a tail here than we had previously. Mm -hmm. 
Now, even though the animal um, in the background is the black and white, inverted commas, version of a belted Galloway, yeah, the, the, I think that's the most common one, within the, the black hair, there are other colours. So, for example, on the neck here, we've got a little bit of an orange highlight, and that's going to work quite well against the blue that I've mixed in in my version of black. So, so this is um, ultramarine blue mixed in with burnt umber, if you remember. And it's also, if I include that little patch of orange, and I just used the tube orange straight out of the tube and just applied it lightly there, you can see that that, just like in the photo actually, that it helps to define the right hand edge of um, of the head. Um, now, there's also a little hint if you look very closely in the reference of orange on the back, but it's much deeper. But I'm going to kind of cheat a bit and just ever so lightly put some of that same colour there, just so there's a little bit of visual bounce one, two from left to right on the on the animal. And uh, continuing with that theme, I'm going to put a little bit there, just a touch on the the bridge of the nose and I think I can probably pop a little bit on the ear without uh, upsetting our the, the little universe we've created here too much. Continuing with the same brush I'm now coming in with some pure titanium white just lightening a few areas of the of the white stripe I'll we'll come back in and put a little bit more on the top of the back of the other animal as well. And then I've got a little bit of that white left on my brush. Um, let's get a little bit of water there. And you can see there was still a little bit of the orange left on the brush, but that's okay. I'm going to grab some of the tinting white as well. Um, so we've got a nice thin mix of that and then going to grab just a touch of the ultramarine blue and just the tiniest bit of the cadmium red. A little bit more of the ultramarine and we'll see, we'll see what that looks like for a highlight colour on this uh, background animal. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with that colour, but I'm switching to my little round brush off camera here. Same one that I used before on the nose here. And um, rather than draw the, the nostrils, I'm going to draw the highlights around the nostrils on this second animal. Now notice what I did there, that the highlight's more, more or less triangular in shape. But I, 
I've drawn the two sides of the triangle complete and then I've just hinted at the the other um, side of the triangle and then on the left side it's even less visible but I'm just going to put in a couple of lines very very thin lines to show that the nostrils are there now when it comes to the eyes they're very much in shadow so what I'm going to do is draw in the highlight of the that's catching the brow of the eye and again I mean you can you can't you can I can barely see it in the photo and I've, I've zoomed in on the, on the photo so I'm going to leave that one uh, as it is for now and while I've got this color on the brush what I can do is come back over to this animal and put in some bluey purpley highlights across the bridge of the nose there and under the nostril there maybe even a bit down there and then I'll grab some of the ultramarine blue again a little bit of the red let's get a bit more mix that in with the bit of white that I had there and let's see what that looks like if I put it uh, Now that's a bit bluer than it is in reality but I think it works well against the orange and it's it's close enough to being a purple that uh, I think it's still fairly convincing whoops sorry just hit the light with my palette um, now now that I've got that color on the brush what I can do is come back in here and just put in a very subdued highlight in on the eye of that animal perhaps a little touch on sort of the lower lash and just a hint at another eye there on the left and then if I go and do a darker again version of that bluey purple Get a bit more red in there I can use that on the nose here to do so that the area surrounding the very dark of the nostrils is just a little bit lighter and a, a different color than what I had before so you know just because I can't see something in the reference it doesn't mean I can't add my own little extra bit as long as I I'm, you know I'm fairly careful about it um, now that color I could use in the on the inside of the left eye a little bit there as well I think and then that brings me back to the eyes on the other animal I'll try and use this as just a little very subdued highlight on that left eye now just looking again at the head of this animal I'm just realizing that uh, we could do with um, bulking out the, the left hand side a little bit so it's almost as if my watercolor marker drawing was originally you know, pretty close um, or closer than I realized and then my loose brushwork things went a little bit astray um, so I can just change the shape there so this is the kind of constant dance you end up doing really with loose expressive brushwork you know obviously the aim is not to be photorealistic but at the same time how much of a distortion from reality is is too much and I personally feel that just um, adding in these few little licks as I'm doing now that's kind of uh, improved the way the this animal looks now the ear here could 
probably to do with being just a touch bigger as well. And uh, I quite like the couple of long hairs which are kind of wisping down from the, the bottom here. So I'll do my version of those. Um, then And then I think the tail that I added in and just sort of made up, that could do a thing just a little bit darker. So I'll give that another lick of paint. Add a few wispy bits along the back. And then um, I want to add just some very subdued highlights to um, to the areas around the eye of the first animal. Um, and I've got this little patch of orange here, but I, because you know it's only been dry a few minutes, with the interactive acrylics I can just add some water and work work away at that with a brush, and it comes back to life quite nicely. Now, if that had been um, uh, you know, a couple of days, then I wouldn't be able to do that. But uh, it's good because you don't, you know, you end up not wasting too much paint. So um, anyway, so that gives me a fairly dark orange, but against the the relative much darker colour that I put down already around this eye, it acts as, as a highlight. And uh, I can add some of that around there on that side of the nose as well some down there on the ear and I think actually that this wasn't my original intention I was going to use a different color up on the forehead but um, I think it's going to work okay so we'll add a few patches of shadow to introduce some texture to the forehead and although the top of the head is very much bathed in light, in the photo, there's a third uh, dark calf behind the head of this one. So the highlights look very light, but I'm working against pale blue sky. So a bit of artistic license here. We'll add some darker wispy bits on the top of the head so that it uh, stands out a bit better. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white and mix that in with what I've got on the brush because I think I sort of did the same thing that I did to this little chap. I made the, the nose a bit too narrow. I think that works a little bit better. Um, I can add a little lick of that down there as well. Um, and I'm feeling the need to make these ears a bit bigger on the foreground animal. Um, so going back to my flat brush, grabbing some of the burnt umber again and uh, I think that ear could do with coming down even further than I've got it especially near the head and on the left I think it could do with coming down to there And widening it there a touch and then 
uh, I'm just going to grab that highlight color again. And we'll put a little highlight on the left side of that ear. We need a little bit more white in there. I think that's working rather better than it was. And then a little bit of artistic license. I'm going to just put a very pale, sorry, not very pale, very thin, pure white highlight there around that nostril. Then another one just around the corner of there. A little touch there of the eye, top of the ear. It's a little bit too much there, but I think it's okay. Just put a couple of wispy bits on top. Another tiny little highlight here over that nostril. Pure ultramarine blue now. I just want to fill in that little gap there. And then a little bit of artistic license. We're just going to put a few very narrow lines along the back here. Just to make that stand out a little bit. And uh, what I'll do is just continue those little textural lines down into the white stripe, just, just a few. I think that just makes the back stand out a little better. And then this is a dark green mixed up with um, ultramarine blue and cad yellow light and then a little touch of cadmium red. And I just want to adjust the line of the belly of the animal here with this shadow color. And so that that's not too obvious an outline of the belly. I'll add some crisscross marks so that uh, suggesting shadows in the grass. And then titanium white, cad yellow light, and cerulean blue. And now it's looking a little bit more like he's uh, standing in the long grass there. <laughs> 